Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. <laughs> There's a time and place for Christians to take account of their actions and decide if they're doing the right thing or if they should proceed differently. Oh, we should always proceed with love and mercy, but there are different ways of showing this. Sometimes the firm way works better than the lenient method and vice versa. No two situations can be met and handled the same way, and we have to rely on the Lord for wisdom and guidance. Well, this is enough of an introduction for today. Let's get into this story, which I like to call The Fighting Parson. Careful of the steps, Sarah. I ain't worried about the steps near as much as I am about getting hurt passing down the street in front of these saloons. Now, well, Sarah, we'll be all right. Just mind our own business. Look out, Ebenezer! I can see him. Oh, these drunken men like to scare a body half to death. But we've got to go to the general store. Oh, I'll call Gibson and have him deliver the groceries. Come along now, Ed. Yeah. If we had a constable in this town with any backbone, he'd see that decent folks got some protection on the street. <laughs> Good afternoon, Miss Davis. How are the children? Well, she can't hear you, Sarah. I think her hearing aid's broken. Poor soul. If her husband didn't spend most of his paycheck on booze, she'd be able to have that gadget fixed. Ebenezer, the door to the church is open. Land sake, Sarah, so it is. The first time it's been open since the parson ski-daddled out of town, fearing for his life. <laughs> McCarthy, this is the house of God. <laughs> How dare you come in here and treat our church this way? The Lord will deal with you about this. Yeah, he's the only one that can, lady. Everybody else is plumb scared to death. <laughs> yeah, maybe God is too. Yeah. <laughs> We're a staying here and having a little church. <laughs> now get out of here before we throw you out. Uh, don't hit him, Ox. He's an old windbag. Let him talk. What do we care? Now, everybody quiet now while Deacon Ox begins reading the good book. <laughs> you think you're pretty tough, don't you? Yeah, we do. Ain't nobody around says we ain't. If they do, they don't stay long. <laughs> we'll see about this, Ox. I know a man that might be just the fella who can take care of you. What we need is a fighting parson in this town. Oh, we're scared, old man. Real scared. Ain't we, fellas? <laughs> you go right ahead and laugh. Because it might be your laugh. <laughs> and that's the whole story, Bill. We've been praying and praying... And I think it's time we've done something about it. Well, I agree, Ab. Uh, what have you got in mind? 
Can you get us a preacher that can preach good and fight better? Perhaps. You think the time has come to fight fire with fire? What do you think? Well, maybe you're right. Silvertown's been wide open for ten years. Yep, we've had five preachers, and they've all been run out of town by the three bullies. Ox, Buzz, and Rolf. Mm-hmm. Don't you think it's time we've done something about it? Yes, I do. It's too bad the town's out of my jurisdiction, or I'd have done something about it myself a long time ago. Eb, I think you're right. Good. Right about what? You want a fighting parson, don't you? I sure do. One with anvils for fists and spring steel for muscles. I know where you can get just the man. Spence Fielding should make a fine fighting parson. This building's awful run down, Parson Stephen, but but it's our church. Eb and I prayed many years now that the Lord would send us a man who could make our church the pride and joy of the town. We don't like to discourage you right off, Parson, but it ain't fair not to tell you what's been going on here about. Well, thank you, Sarah, Eb. You folks just keep right on praying, and I'll get some tools and nails and start fixing up this building. Hard work never hurt anybody. You planning on holding worship service come Sunday? Yes, sir, I am. Got my sermon already. I worked on it coming down on the train. Praise the Lord. Parson, I'm going home and get my cleaning dress on, and I'll be back with a brush and bucket. Come along, Ebenezer. But, Sarah, we ain't told him about the trouble. We'll let the Lord take care of the trouble as it comes, just like he helped Moses when he had trouble. Hey, Ox. Ox, did you hear? Hear what? Why, there's a new parson in town. <laughs> hey, Buzz, did you hear that? Oh, yeah. Hey, we ought to go over and welcome the new preacher. Hey, now, there's a good idea. Give him a nice welcome. Our style. Because <laughs> the rim is just throwing out of town. Now, we'll give him the official silver town welcome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you. We'll go over and shake hands with a new parson. <laughs> Maybe twist it a little, huh? <laughs> Howdy, parson. How do you do? What's your name? Ox McCarthy. This is Buzz Hanson. And this guy with the big muscles is Rolf Thorson. Well, I'm glad to meet you. You gentlemen have quite a reputation. Ah, we have. What kind? Being tough, running this town. Hey, guys, we're famous. Yeah, you're right, Parson. We're tough. And we don't like preachers or church. You said it, Rolf. You best get out while we're still sober, Parson. But when we get drunk, we get awful mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we might hurt you a little bit, preacher, before we throw you out of town. Oh, is that right? You ain't deaf, are you, panty waste? No, not at all. <laughs> well, it's uh, too bad you bought this paint, because uh, it looks like it might get spilled all over the ground. <laughs> I wouldn't try that if I were you. Oh, look out, Ox. You might get hurt. <laughs> ah, show him what happens to preachers, Ralph. Here's a provo. Look out, look out, Parson. <laughs> oh, I ain't gonna hit him with this old man. You think I'm a coward? Now you watch this crowbar, Parson. <laughs> yeah. Pretty strong, ain't he, Parson? He twisted like a pretzel. That could be your neck. Well, that's very impressive, Rolf. Uh, may I see that crowbar, please? Sure. Put it in your suitcase as a souvenir when you leave. Oh, I'm not leaving. I just thought I'd straighten it out. It's a shame to ruin a good crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do that, that's your boy. <laughs> hey, look! Look, the person just twisting the bar! What's the matter, Ox? Buzz? Rolf? 
can't believe your eyes, can you? This man's the grand weightlifting champion and wrestling champion at State University. <laughs> oh, ah. You thought I was joking, didn't you, when I said we'd get us a fighting parson? Well, here he is. <laughs> Where are the folks who said they'd be glad to come to church? I don't know, Parson. There was about two dozen of them. Well, where are they? Or aren't they that interested? Oh, they're interested, Parson. Very interested indeed. Only they're afraid. Afraid? Of what, me? No. They think you're the greatest thing that's hit this town in 15 years. They've been threatened by Ox and his boys. Oh, no. It's the truth, Parson. That just shows you how much power those evil men have in this town. I see. Well, come on, folks. We're going to hold church anyway. Just the three of us? Well, the Lord tells us that even two or three gathered together in his name will receive his blessing. Good morning, Parson. Good morning, Constable. What can I do for you this morning? Uh, several dozen of the citizens of this town have been threatened with bodily harm if they attend church. Now, what are you going to do about it? Mm, what do you expect me to do? Well, stop this persecution. You want me to try and stop Oxen's boys? <laughs> Not on your life. Is that all the effort you make to enforce the law around here? Parson, I have offered to quit this job, but there ain't a man around here that wants it, and I want to stay healthy. You know as well as I do that I'm no match for those tough miners. Yes, I guess I do. Well, thank you for your time. Parson? Yes? What are you going to do? I don't know yet. I'll have to think about it. But one thing you can tell Ox is that I'm not going to quit. <laughs> Bill, can you get temporary jurisdiction in Silvertown? I think so, Spence. I'll have to talk with Judge Wilson this evening and with the governor if necessary. This thing is getting out of hand. I take it, then, if you're given authority, you'll enter the town to protect the citizens and their rights. Yes, Spence. I'll see to it that there's no more of this strong-arm stuff, and I'll keep rangers there until you solve the problem. Uh, that's what has me worried. Is that fight you had years ago with that fellow hanging over you like a dark cloud? Yes. Yes, even though it all happened before I became a Christian, I can still hear the judge talking to me in his chambers after that doctor told us that Steve was... Mr. Fielding, I've taken all the facts of this case into careful consideration. I find there's no deliberate intent to kill on your part or to do bodily injury. Steve Dunkirk brought your wrath to the boiling point, and you lost your self-control. Remember this, young man. With your college work and experience in the Army, your hands are dangerous weapons. You're trained in the art of killing with your bare hands. If this happens again, I'll have you brought to trial for assault with a deadly weapon. Bill, ever since that fight, every time I look at my hands, I see two deadly weapons... I can't shake it. I've prayed about it for long and hard, but, well, I just can't get rid of it. I understand, Spence. You're afraid now that Ox and his boys might prod you deep enough so you'll lose your self-control and hurt somebody for life. Well, huh? That's it. The fine testimony I'd be for the Lord then. Every two or three months I visit Steve, it makes me shudder to think that he's all crippled up because of my hands. Spence, if I can't get clearance to go into Silvertown, I'll see to it that Marshal Paulson goes. He's a fine and fearless lawman, and he'll do a good job. Well, thanks, Bill. Spence, there's one thing you've got to remember. Well, I'm listening. This is your problem, and you'll have to solve it. We'll just be there to establish law and order, and... Remove the fear complex. You'll have to battle it out with Ox and his toughs one way or another. Now, don't worry about your hands and what they can do. Concentrate on your job. The Lord will see to it that you come out of this with the reputation of being the right kind of a fighting parson. Well, 
Oh, there goes that church bell again. This is the second Sunday he's had church. But it's gonna be his last. Are you joking? You know we can't do nothing to them rangers leave Ox. Yeah, we ain't fooling around with no federal cops. Besides, they play pretty rough. Look at them clubs they got with lead in the end. Them automatic shotguns. And they got horses that ain't scared of nothing. No, I ain't blind. We ain't gonna mix with them rangers. I don't want nothing to do with them either. That boss ranger, Bill Jefferson, is one tough hombre. Ugh. Look at all the people in this town going to church. Ox, we're losing our grip. No, we ain't. Not yet. I ain't through with that preacher. Me neither. Him on Ben and that crowbar ain't scared me none. What's he gonna do against the three of us? Well, we got to think of something. Something good that'll scare the hair right off of his head. <laughs> Ain't that a pretty picket fence the parson's fixing for the church? Oh, thank you, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. It sure is. That's a shame. It's going to have to get busted up like this. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, parson. You got firewood for the winter. Only if I was you, I wouldn't be around here that long. Ain't you got nothing to say, parson? No threats or nothing that might derail us up, huh? I have nothing to say. Come on, let's go back to the saloon. I think the parson's a little scared. Yeah, he's <laughs> scared. Oh, Spencer Fielding, your hands are deadly weapons. Hey, fellas. Here comes the parson, all loaded down with groceries. Yeah. Well, now, ain't that a shame? Say... Maybe we should help him across the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Parson, you shouldn't be carrying such a big load. Let me help you. I'll manage very nicely without your help, Box. I said let me help you. <laughs> now, nah, nah, look what you've done, Ox. <laughs> oh, ain't that a shame. I'm awful sorry I busted up your vittles, Parson. I wouldn't be sorry. It could have been his head. <laughs> Ain't you going to cuss us out, Parson? No. I'm going back to the store and buy some more groceries. If this happens again, I'll have you brought to trial for assault with a deadly weapon. Now, there goes that stinking church bell again. Every Sunday morning it goes clang, clang. Ooh, my head. Oh, shut up, Ox, and go back to sleep. Uh, Who can sleep with that noise? Ox, we gotta get rid of that parson. Yeah, real soon. Parson? We're heading up a committee to make a complaint. Yes? We all like you, but you ain't the man we thought you was the time you straightened out that bent crowbar. We thought we finally had a fighting, Parson. Well, go on. You ain't fighting. Ox and his hoodlums have pushed you all around town. As soon as the rangers leave, we'll be right back where we started. Folks will be afraid to come to church again. You're right, folks. Yes, you've got a legitimate complaint. Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, you'd better make up your mind soon. Either straighten things out or we'll have to look for another man. A parson with some backbone. Bill, I thought you said you'd send us a man who could fight for what's right and put down the evil in this town. Folks, I know what you're thinking, but I didn't recommend Spence just to hear myself talk. He's the man for the job, all right. Talk, talk, that's all we hear. We're getting tired of it. As soon as your rangers leave the town, the problem will be the same. Ox and his bad men will run this town again. Folks, I give you my word, we're not going to leave until Spence solves his problem. Well, then you ain't going to be here long. Mm, What do you mean? 
And if he doesn't do something soon, we're going to have to look for another man. Hey, this ain't Sunday. What's he clanging the bell for? Somebody die? Ah, I have they're having prayer meeting on Wednesday night. Oh, church <laughs> twice a week. It ain't bad enough we got to hear that bell on Sunday morning. Yeah. I'm, uh, generating an idea. Oh, it's about time. Let's have it. No, uh, not here, Rolf. Meet me in Shaft 6 at lunchtime tomorrow, and I'll tell you what it is. Uh, you're afraid somebody might hear, huh? Yeah. This time we're... Playing for keeps. We don't want anybody to know it was us. But one thing for sure, we're getting rid of that preacher. Thanks, Spence. Now you make good coffee. Oh, thank you, Bill. I, uh, suppose Ebenezer's talked to you about me by now. Yeah. But, uh, don't let it upset you. Why not? I'm no coward. I could wipe up the street with those three clowns before they knew what hit them. Well, I'm fed up with getting pushed around. I'm here to fight for right. And a lot of fighting I've done. Well, I don't care about myself, but I do care about the folks that look at me like, look to me like the children of Israel did to Moses. I, uh... Understand how you feel, Spence. How can you understand? You're an experienced and tough cop. You've got guns and men. You can crack heads open if the miners get rough. If they go wild, you can gas them into submission. It's easy for you to say you understand, but do you? Do you know how I feel? I'd like to bang heads together, too, with my fists. Those men and their whiskey-sodden brains are no match for me, and you know it, and I know it, and the whole town knows it. Is it all out now? All the pent-up emotions you've kept under lock and key? Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. I had to let it out or burst. I'm, I'm not mad at you. Just at myself. Eb is right. I ought to put up or shut up and get out. Did you ever read the book of Job? Well, are you serious? Of course I've read the book of Job. Have you forgotten what you read? Well, no, no, of course not. I think you have. You're talking in riddles. What did God permit Satan to do to Job? Take every worldly position he had, even his family, and afflict the man with a disease. That's right. Job was beaten almost to a pulp by Satan, and what did Job say about all this? Well, he still trusted God. And Job was right. The Lord restored to Job much more than he'd ever had because of his unflinching faith. Did God do this according to Job's plan? No. God did it according to his own calendar. You mark my words, young fellow. You stay as strong as Job did in spite of what's happening, and the Lord will work it all out according to his own good pleasure. Oh, thanks, Bill. I needed somebody to bolster me up. What's that? Hmm. Mind disaster alarm. Come on, we've got work to do. Superintendent, what happened? Uh, hello, Parson. Uh, there's been a cave in number six shaft. Uh, what can I do to help? Bury them when they get them out. Is it that bad? Yes, I'm afraid so. There are ten men trapped right down here where this X is on the chart. No hope at all? Well, let's face it. This is the worst one we've ever had. There's gas forming down there. Bill Costey's down there now trying to make contact. Uh, we'll know when he comes back to the surface. Oh, and here he comes now, off the lift. They look a real bad down there. Oh, how bad, it's Joe? It's a cave and a 15 or maybe 20 feet long. A real bad boss. Oh, I was afraid of that. Now, how's the gas? I don't know. Not so bad, not so good. No, we blow it out and start big, no? Yes, right away. Uh, but watch out for the gas. We don't want an explosion, too. Okay, boss. You go fix it up right away. You heard it, fellas. What's your chances? Pretty slim. The dust of the cave in mixes with what little air there is and makes it rough. If we can push an air pipe through the cave in, we might save them. The 
the gas accumulation makes rescue work very slow, no spark. I'd like to go down with the rescue party. Why, you'll only be risking your life and maybe for nothing. Well, I'm not going down just to pray. I'm going down to dig. Three of those men are your enemies. Hey, you must be mistaken. I don't have any enemies. All right, Parson, go ahead. How can you risk your life after what they've done to you is beyond me. We get to just in time, a person. Everybody she's alive still. Yes, they're all alive. Some of them are injured. They'll have to be moved up on stretch. Okay, Joe, fix it up. Just as soon as we make a bigger hole so it gave in. We all better get back to the shovels in that case, huh? No, you and the person take care of the men. And Joe's either makes sure everything goes fast as she can, and maybe an hour we can move them to the surface. <laughs> All right. The whole sheets are big enough to slide the stretcher through one at a time. Okay, we've got them ready. Here's the first man. <sighs> oh, hello, Ox. Oh, what are you doing here? Why didn't you stay up top? Quiet, Ox. I want to lift you up. What's that noise? <laughs> hey, that's water. We'll down like rats. Hey, hey, we got it. Come on. All right, men. Now, shut up. Parsons, come on. Pray us out. Joe, how can we stop the water until we get the men out? Only one way. You see that beam overhead? If she's to come down, that'd make it cave in between us and water. The water not push through for hours. Okay, start moving the men out. I'll take care of the beam. Uh, oh, this is no time to make jokes. The only way to get beam down is blast. And there's too much gas in here for that. So we try to get out fast as we can. So we must not make it. The water she's coming in too fast. Hey, Buzz, is that a heavy bar next to you? Uh, yeah. All right, start moving them out, Joe. I'll get that beam down with his bar. This I gotta see, even if I drown. Bill, get them moving. Right. You able-bodied men start pushing these stretcher cases along and make it snappy. Okay, move it over. Look out for those rocks. Come on, move ox here. Now, don't move me, Ranger. I gotta see this. He ain't stronger than me, and he ain't gonna move that beam. Now, Bill... Lift me up against the wall so I can get my body between the wall and the bar. Okay. I get maximum leverage there. All right. You go. Let's get it. That's good. Good. Now, stand back. Yeah, he won't do it. No man's that strong. Yeah, we won't die from drowning. We'll laugh ourselves to death. Take your thoughts to yourself. <laughs> the beam! She's beginning to give way! Ox, he, he did it. He's stronger than any one of us. Yes, in more ways than one. Joe, let's get these men to the lift. Grab the other end of Ox's stretcher. Wait a minute. Parson, I, I got something to say. Yes, Ox? Anytime you want work done around the church, you let me know. We ain't as strong as you, but almost. Sure, sure, thanks a lot. Every time I hear that church bell, I'm going to be glad. So the fighting parson won the battle, but not in the way he expected. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... 